Hello world, Shelly here, and today I'd like to do a quick little get ready with me I look using the latest release from Alter Ego. This is the Artemis Whoa palette. <laughs> Can you tell? Does it look familiar? They're duping out the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette, and I'm very glad that they did because I did not buy the Metropolis palette. I've been tempted, but I didn't buy it. I don't do warm tones very often, so I was really hoping that I would have a reasonably priced alternative, and now I do. This one retails for $22. You can get it on shopalterego.com, and I think my code still works. I have a code Shelly10 that'll get you 10% off. It's not an affiliate code, like it doesn't, I don't make any money from it, it's just a discount for you guys. So try that, see if it works. And I'm gonna show you guys how I got this eye look. This is my first time using this palette. I will talk through my impressions, give you my thoughts at the end, and if you're curious how I got this look, keep on watching. Look at this beautifulness. Oh, so pretty. I am so glad that Alter Ego decided to dupe out this palette because I did not buy the Metropolis palette because it is warm toned and I just don't wear warm tones all that often. So I was really hoping beyond hope that they would create a version of it. I'm gonna start with the Alter Ego eyeshadow base. This is their eyeshadow primer, which is very similar in how it performs on me to the Urban Decay Primer Potion, which you know I have used that in my life. It would be my favorite cream style primer, but this one performs so well that it's totally a dupe and you can save yourself a heck of a lot of money using this one instead. Now, I wanna point something out. I love the way they rearrange the colors. The way this palette is laid out, every single vertical is a different eye look you could make a different eye look. They've, they've intentionally laid it out. The color combos are done for you. And of course you could do whatever you want and just go everywhere all over the place. But how nice is it that you can just grab and go and the column I'm looking at is this one right on the end here. I am just looking at like a smoky green neutral eye is what is jumping out at me with this one. So that's what I'm gonna do. And we will start out with the old Wayne Goss 03, the brush I could not live without. I'm going to first dip into the shade Hunt and use that as a sort of crease transition shade. There are a couple things I appreciate about Alter Ego shadows. Number one, they're very easy to use. They don't come in crazy with too much pigment because when that happens I just find it's a lot harder to control. It's less beginner friendly. I would rather have to dip into a pan twice and get the level of product I want than accidentally go in with too much and have my eye look ruined because I don't have the skill to figure out how to fix it. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather not make the mistake to begin with and these shadows are so good. For, I mean look how pretty this is blending out. They blend super easily they don't go wild on you. You're never gonna have a shadow go rogue out of an alter ego formula. They just perform exactly as you expect. And at this price point, I mean, holy cow. Mm, that's pretty, that goes really nicely with my dress. <laughs> I was hoping that that's what was gonna happen because this dress was part of the inspiration for this color scheme. Why does my mirror keep turning off? I'm gonna go in with the next shade down, Silent, and take my Sigma E25. And this is gonna go into the crease. I love the combination of like an olive green and a mustard yellow. And apparently so do they because they put them right next to each other. I'm gonna take a little bit more 
onto the outer third of my lid. Normally I would get a flat shader brush to do this to get a little more payoff, but I'm kind of going for a smoky-ish look anyway, so I can stick with this brush, that's fine. Moving right on down, I'm going to go into this shade Thrill and smoke out the outer corner just a little bit and bring that into the crease. So just to deepen it a little tiny bit and to give some crease definition, I am probably going to come back and do the crease again after I put down a shimmer, but I just want to get the shape going a little bit. These undertones are very well curated. One thing I am noticing is that these last two shades, the green and this sort of suede brown, they are pressed pretty hardly into the pan. So you do need to dip in a bit to get them out. It's kind of the opposite of what the trend is right now with super powdery loose shadows. You do have to go into your pan and you don't get a lot of kick up in the pan, which is less wasted product. I love how these colors are blending together. <gasps> oh, I love a good color combination. Now there is a black shade ambush right beneath that. And if I was doing this as a nighttime look, I would go in there and deepen up a little bit more, but I think I'm gonna hold off for the moment and not go full on dark smoky eye. Maybe it's just because I really wanna dip into this shimmer here. So this second shimmer in the next column scent in the pan, I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell. I'm gonna like tilt this back and forth. It's got, there I can just see some multi-dimensional I'm not sure what I'm seeing. I think I'm seeing a little bit of pink in there. It's a it's a goldish shimmer, but I'm seeing some silver and some pink, and it looks pretty fantastic. So should we start with a brush? Let's start with a brush. I'm gonna use my Smith 253, and these I usually prefer using my fingertips, but I'm gonna tap it off a little because it picked up a lot of product, and I don't want a lot of fallout. Oh, that's pretty. I wasn't gonna go with so much shimmer on my lid, like two thirds across, but now I think I am. I'm just gonna shimmer it because, oh, look at that. It does have, there's something, I don't know if it's rose gold or pink. There is another shift in here and it is subtle but next to these earthy tones, it almost shifts bronzish in the light. The camera never picks up the shift of colors on the eye. Let me finger swatch this. Let's see if it'll pick it up on here. That's beautiful. This eye look makes me wanna go camping. I'm gonna go back into that green just a little bit to make sure we don't lose a smooth transition between these two shades. Ooh, but when that green goes over the gold, it almost looks mossy. Oh my goodness. This is making me so happy. And I'm just gonna go back into that like suede brown, like I said, and make sure I've got the depth over where the, you know, I don't want glitter going into my crease. So I do this last little step to make sure that the glitter stays where it's supposed to. 
I take a Wayne Goss number seven with a little bit more of that brown suede shade thrill and just get a little bit on the lower lash line. That green would look nice on the lower lash line with this too. It's going to be a personal preference. I think you could go with either one. I'm going to go into this shade Obscure for inner corner highlight. I'm going to get my mascara and liner and finish up this face. I'll be right back. And here is the finished look. Okay, rest of my face, I used the Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Airbrush Bronzer. I use shade one to set my face, shade two to bronze. I am testing out today the L'Oreal True Match Eye Cream Concealer, as well as the, yikes, number seven Advanced All-in-One Foundation. I've got, what else is on my face? Oh. <laughs> Elf Primer Infused Blush in Always Punchy, Elf Retro Paradise. This is the highlight in shade Soul. My lip, I put down first a little bit of Elf Retro Paradise lip gloss in a moment and then went on top of it just to kind of water down the shade a little bit with the new CoverGirl Ulta Matte. I know, lip gloss with a matte whatever. I'm just breaking all the rules today because I just wanted to tone it down and this has a little bit of peachiness to it so I wanted to take the pink and turn it a little more peachy and I think it worked out quite well. So that is the Alter Ego Artemis palette. Mm, I love it. I will say next time I use this I'm going to put down a glitter primer on my lid before I apply that glitter shade. I do have a tiny bit of fallout happening from that shade, but it seems to be staying in place on my eyes. The primer would be not necessarily to keep it opaque on my eyes, but to prevent any pieces from falling down onto my face. Overall, first impression, super stoked. This is the typical Alter Ego formula. It performed just as all of the other Alter Ego palettes that I've had have performed. I love how they improve upon layout in these palettes. It's brilliant to me and I appreciate that because it makes it a lot easier to use. And there you have it. The latest from Alter Ego. Code Shelly10, I believe, still works. Should get you 10% off your Alter Ego purchase on shopalterego.com. $22 is the full retail price on this one. Go get you some. Save some money off of those high-end price tags. As always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. Come back every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern time for new videos. Thumbs up this one if you enjoyed it. I appreciate your time, and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye.